In search tech class, we're going to cover how Maslow's hierarchy of needs applies to the operating room. But just in case you haven't gotten to Maslow's hierarchy of needs in your psychology class yet, here's a quick review. Maslow said that the needs of an individual can be categorized into this pyramid with the more important needs at the bottom having to be met before you can meet the other needs. So at the bottom, we have physiological needs. And then the next level up is security and safety. The next group up is acceptance and love. And the next level up is self-esteem. And then the next level up and the top of the pyramid is self-actualization. So at the bottom here, the most important needs are physiological needs, which is just physical needs. And these are very basic needs to the human body. So water, food, sleep, breathing, and sex are the basic physiological needs in Maslow's bottom level of the pyramid. And he says that those need to be met before you can uh, meet the other needs and move up in the pyramid towards self-actualization. The next set of needs are safety needs in this second box of the pyramid. And that includes physical safety. So if you were homeless, um, securing a permanent residence or maybe finding a shelter where you felt safe, um, would fall under safety, but in addition to that, it can mean things like security of resources, so employment, security of, um, you know, health. If you've lost your job, you might come back to this safety um, level of needs. The next level up is acceptance and love. So that's going to be needing to have friends, a social group that you fit into, um, love, intimacy, and affection. And the next level is self-esteem, so that's independence, um, self-respect, confidence, and achievement. And then the next level up from that is self-actualization, so that's achieving your full potential um, creatively, maybe in your job, um, sort of a sense of self-fulfillment. So why do we talk about this in surge tech class? Well, we can use this as a framework for helping our patients with their needs. So starting with their physical um, basic needs, we can help our patients with basic homeostasis functions. So they need to breathe so we can provide them with the oxygen. Uh, they're going to need fluids so we can provide them with an IV. Um, they need um, to maintain a, a normal body temperature, so we help them with a warm blanket or maybe warm irrigation. And they need a means of elimination so we can help them with a catheter. Then the next level up is going to be um, safety. So we can assure them that they're gonna be free from unintentional harm, make sure that we protect them from unintentional harm, checking things like the electrosurgery unit, make sure it's in working condition, um, watching things in the OR to make sure that you know you don't drop a scalpel on, on the patient or something. Um, we can help them with pain meds. We can put the security strap on them to make sure they stay centered in the operating room bed. We can help them with assurances um, so that they will feel more secure. A warm blanket can also give them a sense of security. Um, so we can offer them a warm blanket as, as a safety um, need as well. And if they're still having um, concerns, you can get the doctor or the anesthesia care provider to come in and um, help them discuss the um, the surgery and, and help them understand that they are going to be safe during the surgery. But you do want to be sure at this point you don't make any promises that you can't keep. So don't promise that the surgery is going to go well, that you're going to get the whole tumor or anything like that. 
So this bottom two tiers are going to be physical needs. And then um, we can help them with acceptance and love. So if they're coming in for a, um, if they're coming in on a gurney and they have to transfer to the operating room bed, you can help them with modesty and embarrassment, especially in the elderly where they grew up in a time when people were more modest or teenagers who of course are always a little um, embarrassed um, about their bodies. You can help them, you know, maybe throw a sheet over, kind of hold it up while they slide underneath it, something like that, so that we're helping them to avoid, you know, embarrassment in, in moving over into the bed. Um, or if they're coming in, we can just help with empathy, feeling like, you know, we do care about them, that this is an important event in their life. Even if we've seen five appendectomy cases in a row, this appendectomy to them is still a big major event in their life. And so understanding that and um, just showing that we do care and that we're there for them. And then in the self-esteem category, we're gonna see people coming in for surgeries where they may lose some of their self-esteem, some of their self-image. So cosmetic surgery or um, reconstructive surgery. Um, for example, if a, someone's coming in for a mastectomy, you can see where they might um, have problems with self-image. So we can help them with that um, in part just by keeping our opinions to ourselves, um, you know, not making comments about um, what they're having done um, and reassuring them, you know, that people are still going to accept them. Um, and so these two levels here are going to be psychological. And then in the self-actualization category, you might kind of wonder how we can help them with self-actualization in, in the sense that self-actualization is a measure of having control over your future. So we can make sure that they are instrumental in the decisions that affect their care, that they their choices are respected. So again, keeping our opinions to ourselves if they've made a controversial choice. Maybe they've come in for um, a double mastectomy because they have the BRCA gene and they just don't want to have to worry about it. Um, you know, it's kind of a controversial thing to do, but for them it's the right choice. Um, so just kind of making sure that their decisions are respected, that we're keeping our opinions to ourselves. Um, and so this, so this is going to be fulfillment. And so that's why we cover Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the operating room, so people needs. Be sure you can identify physical and physiological needs from psychological needs.